Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local and not so local music and the people that make it. I'm Josh, and today I've been invited to review a full day at Apocalypse in the Desert, a heavy metal festival held at Backstage Bar and Billiards and Fremont Country Club down on Fremont Street. And as you can see from the event flyer, the bill was packed with some amazingly talented and heavy acts from all over the country. The more astute of you may have noticed this is a little bit longer video than my usual reviews. That's because this one day packed almost 12 hours worth of music into one event. So strap in kiddos, because this one's going to take a minute. Oh, and I don't know about you, but I'm bringing my earplugs. Thank you, Bob. Can we play anything for you? Anything! Just play it loud, okay? <laughs> This video is brought to you by Tile. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Starting at 1 p.m. and utilizing both stages, the festival had fans moving back and forth with every band change. The performance alternated venues with the first half of the show featuring 20 minute sets. To keep everyone happy and rocking, there were two food trucks present as well. While enjoying their food, patrons could talk to the bands and shop for band merchandise. Uh, it was really well thought out and was also a nice place to take a quick break or have a chat without screaming in someone's ear. To keep things simple, I'm not going to mention which stage each band played on for this review. For those of you keeping score at home, just know that the first band started on the backstage bar and billiard stage, the second band rocked on the Fremont Country Club stage, and so on. Got it? Kicking things off was the Waterfall King out of Elgin, Illinois. They also have the distinction of being this channel's 500th subscribers. If you'd like to be cool like them, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. Thanks. With a sound based primarily in stoner rock, this band was a great way to start off this event. Blending melodic rock with slow, chugging metal warmed up the growing crowd nicely. Uh, for those of you over 40, it felt a little bit like a Deep Purple show. Next up was Assimilator out of Indiana. With more of a classic death metal sound, this band was a little bit more of a ramp up from the first act, proudly displaying technical and fast guitar playing and some great stage presence. They grabbed the torch lit by the Waterfall King and took off running. Act number three was Twin Void out of Spokane, Washington. Coming out of the gate swinging with screaming vocals and brutal riffs, this band was a little different than the rest of the show's acts. Bringing a little bit of punk rock to stoner rock, they used their short set well and left us wanting more. The next act was Next Door to Heaven out of Los Angeles. One of the few female fronted bands of the event, this metalcore group combined guttural yells with vocals straight out of Russian heavy metal while showcasing polyrhythmic beats and just a touch of the gent. It's not pronounced the gent. The D is silent. The D is silent. Anywho, stepping up to the plate was Deoculted, one of a few bands from Austin, Texas. Bringing the high energy and stage presence to their own brand of metal, this act made great use of breakdowns. They were engaging and still managed to sonically assault the crowd, but in a good way. Dreams in Peril was next, a band out of Kansas City. This deathcore band brought crushing grooves and epic melodic sounds that showed an attention to musicianship. Their set was full of dynamic moments and the crowd was appreciative. Next up was Etched in Embers, showing off Missouri metal at its finest. With some obvious emo and new metal influences present in their sound, this group was a bit of a rose among thorns, including some atmospheric electronica elements. They also included great use of chorus on their vocals to make a sound that was much bigger than what was on stage. Coming up next was Las Vegas band Eloteros. Bringing some Latin flair to their brand of death and black metal, they made things moshable with guttural vocals, and blast-heavy riffs. The next act on stage was Signs of Tranquility, out of Denver. Another female-fronted metal act, they did a great job fusing the singer's siren song with solid metal and hard rock. Aside from the obvious influences of bands like Evanescence and Garbage, their sound was somehow still unique to them, and the audience was into them. Changing things up a little were Owls and Aliens, out of Oregon. 
A party boat adrift in a sea of death metal, this band cooks up a lovely concoction of heavy metal, punk rock, grunge, classic rock, and a little bit of everything in between. They left the crowd wanting more and were a blast to watch on stage. Coming up next was Ocean Harvest from Gila River Indian Community, Arizona. This three-piece metal band comes from a place not really known for metal, but you wouldn't know it to hear them. Their music blends multiple influences into their own unique sound, and the crowd couldn't get enough of them. The next act was Ventress, a band from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. With a heavy, dark, and melodic sound, this band isn't afraid to use quiet moments and soft sounds to get their point across. This dynamic tension makes their music infectious and is a great showcase of their musicianship. Representing the local music scene, Slaughterhouse Effect were up next. This deathcore band brought the heavy, blasting through their set with a solid showing of time changes, blast beats, and guttural vocals. I'm looking forward to having them on the channel, just uh, like everyone else in this event. Up next was Arsenic Addiction out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Introducing a little bit of strings to soaring vocals and hellish howls, this band seems determined to raise the dead with their music. There is a substantial backstory to their sound, and this pageantry bleeds over into their live show. Coming up next was Edge of Destiny, another band out of Austin, Texas. What is it about that place? This female-fronted metal band seeks to inspire through their music, and they do it very well. Their set featured soaring vocals over aggressive metal, and the general vibe of their entire set was positive and inclusive. Coming up next out of Beeville, Texas, was a band provocatively titled Plague. Surprisingly, not the first metal band with that name. This metalcore and thrash music group isn't worried about offending anyone with their music or their song titles, yet their sound is complicated and has a lot going on under the hood. I was pleasantly surprised by the layers they managed to create in their live show, and everyone enjoyed their set. One of a few bands that have been on Room 6 before, from this event, Shatter the Moon were up next. Combining hard rock with a great fictional backstory and coordinated stage lighting, this band specializes in high-energy, action-packed rock that forces you to bang your head while still watching their antics on stage. The next act was Short Fuse, coming out of the Bay Area in Northern California. With an emphasis on melodic death metal, their music was full of the central themes of most heavy metal. You could taste the anger in the vocals and see a real attention to detail in the way they played their instruments. A solid outing from a solid band. Up next were the hosts of the event and another band of Room 6 alumni, Mastiff. This band encapsulated that heavy, thick metal sound, and it's obvious why their crowds are, are usually the biggest of any show that they play. Full of brutal breakdowns and chugging riffs, they always bring out the adrenaline, and this time was no different. Out of Darkness was next, making the longest trek to the festival all the way from Florida. Aside from being a tight and technical metal band, you couldn't help but notice the lead singer's amazing braided beard. This was just another reason to enjoy their set of hard, pounding music that melted all our faces. Coming up next was Crematorium, a band out of Chicago. This band calls their sound Murdercore, and once you experience their music, it's obvious why. Brutal is the word here, and their set carried the overall tone set by previous acts. Unfortunately, this was their second to last performance as a band, but fortunately, they're just rebranding and we'll be updating their fans with more information in the future. So stay tuned. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. It's a sad fact for musicians on the road or just playing at their local bar that gear gets stolen sometimes because people. Fortunately, there's a way to help get it back. With Tile, you have a backup plan when something needs to be found. Just tap Find in the Tile app. Watch the Tile detector's green rings fill in as you get closer to them. Tile also has lost and found stickers with a QR code full of your contact info. That can be scanned by whoever finds it. If you lose something when you're out and about, Tile can help you locate it. View its most recent location on a map, and it'll show you the last time it was with you or the last time your Tile app was able to locate it. You can also tap Notify when found so the Tile network, which is every phone running the Tile app and their network extenders, can help locate the lost item. Each device on the network is able to help locate Tile trackers and send location updates to your Tile app. Anonymously, of course. And with the Premium Protect Plan, Tile will even reimburse you if something can't be found. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time only, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get peace of mind and save some cash. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Tile for being a sponsor. 
and let's get back to the show. Hailing from Las Vegas, the simply named Take were up next. Though their name is simple, their sound was anything but. Utilizing elements of metal, hardcore rock, and even rap, this group of fearless musical explorers seem to enjoy doing what their namesake says when it comes to multiple musical genres. Coming up next was Sangra, an international metal band based out of Southern California. What makes them international? That would be their use of melodic death metal fused with groove and Latin rhythms. This metal melange creates a sound that's accessible to all and was a nice palate cleanser in a day full of heavy and hard music. While other acts at this festival have introduced some Latin flavor, Sempera Cerbis is bringing some actual Latin to the mix. Finishing out the bands out of Texas for this list, this band combines singing with growling and guitar harmonies with gut punch rips to bring the heavy while keeping things interesting. Finishing out the event were the headliners, Hemlock, who call Las Vegas home. While other acts only played for 20 or 30 minutes, Hemlock fans got to enjoy a full hour and a half set from these heavyweight metal icons. It was obvious from the get-go that they were there to party hard, and the crowd had no problems with that. Being around for over 30 years certainly hasn't slowed them down, and the stage presence and energy on stage was infectious. They were a perfect way to finish out a full day of headbanging, and I'm so glad I was able to catch all the acts mentioned in this video. Overall, day number two of Apocalypse in the Desert Metal Fest was amazing, and I'm frankly amazed that I survived it. Make sure you check out all the social media handles for the acts mentioned in this video uh, so you can see what they're up to. You'll be glad you did, and tell them Room 6 sent you. Thanks for watching. I know it was a long one, and I hope you enjoyed. If you want to know anything that the other, that all the bands are doing that I mentioned in this video, check out the social media handles down in the description. Um, other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you would like to subscribe, I'd love you and it really does make a difference. Click up there and don't forget to ring the bell. And if you want to hear my own music, which is definitely not heavy metal, click over there. Remember to be amazing. And if, by the way, if you're still watching this, thank you. And if you're interested, you see this shirt? This is from a Room 6 Rocks showcase that I did highlighting some past Room 6 guests. I got a new one coming. Save the date, May 6th down at Hennessy's Tavern. More information coming. But yeah. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6.